My guest is a national treasure, a literary icon. Even American authors seem to be eager to get an endorsement from Anne Voskamp. The woman who gave us New York Times bestsellers like A Thousand Gifts says there isn't one of us who hasn't lost something, who doesn't fear something, who doesn't ache with some unspoken pain. Her new book is For the Lovers and the Sufferers. Uh, we could spend a week exploring the broken way, a daring path into the abundant life. Mm. And thank you for bearing your soul, mm. as is typical, for mm. sharing your pain. Mm. You say ink has been the cheapest of medicines in times of pain. It has for me. It has. I think in 1,000 Gifts, I picked up a pen, started to realize, writing down all the things I was grateful for awakened me to grace upon grace, that God was present in the midst of hard places. And then in the broken way, I take up that same pen that went ahead and gave thanks for a thousand things and, and draw that cross on my wrist every day. Um, all there is to hear is beloved. All there is to see is my new identity in Christ, who I am in Christ. And I want to be intentional about naming myself every day, who he names me beloved in the midst of my brokenness. Mm. Yeah, ink is cheap therapy, Moira. <laughs> um, uh, is it okay to say the names of your seven, now yeah, seven, children? Yeah. Can I get them right? <laughs> um, Caleb is 21, Joshua is 19, Hope is 17, Levi is 15, Malachi will turn 14, <laughs> Shalom is 11, and Shiloh just turned two. Mm. It's uh, an unfathomable, full, mm. Rich life. life. Crazy it life. Rich. Crazy. And exuberant. <laughs> homeschooling still everybody up to grade six? Yeah, yeah. And then they start taking online classes. Yeah. It is incredible. How long have you been known in the literary world? Oh. This was the start. Yeah. A thousand gifts. Yeah. So I, I started blogging um, 2000 and... Oh, no. Yeah. I guess it goes back to 2004. Mm -hmm. I started blogging. Um, and then 1,000 Gifts came out, is that 2011? Mm. So, but writing for an audience of one, because I really believe that we need to go into a vertical space just between me and God and lay that out on an altar. And if it can meet someone else in their own brokenness, I think there's grace in that space. And that is the experience as you read. It's like you're having an epiphany yes. and you're just writing it. And yeah. it could be you just walked out of your kitchen and something happened and God is speaking and we're learning I, I think, with you. I think I want to just, I want to be down in the trenches with people. I don't want to talk at people. I just want to say, this is my own broken story. And maybe you'll see a bit of your broken story in that space and encounter him in a really intimate, vulnerable way. Can we go back to your birthday? And yes. you're not shy about it. It was your 40th. Yeah, it was my 40th. And thank you, 40th mm. birthday for this book. Um, yeah. And a gift that arrived yeah. from Peru yeah. that became, wow. Sort of a metaphor for me. Um, Capital M. I, I opened up this box um, and there was a, <laughs> strange, who gets that in the mail? It was a Lord's Supper. So all these little figurines that were made out of clay, um, but in the, the packing and the shipping um, were all broken. The hands of Jesus were broken off. He was dismembered. Completely dismembered. And, and you would think, oh, it's ruined and it's broken, it's wrecked. But for me, it was, ah, oh, it was perfect. <laughs> the hands of Jesus were broken off. We're meant to be the hands of Jesus in the world right now. We're meant to be broken and given. So it's actually broken in three places at the base. The hands of Jesus are broken off. So I've taken that and it sits right beside our dinner table. So every day when I sit down to eat my supper, I look at the last supper, think about how can I be broken and given? How can I be the hands and feet of Jesus into a broken hearted world? Because I think that's the answer to suffering is that we feel along for where are the fractures in the world and then take in the little broken pieces of our own hearts and pour that into the brokenness. I think withness breaks brokenness. Ooh, I like that. I don't even remember reading that. <laughs> it's withness there. Break, break, breaks brokenness. brokenness. If we come alongside and people know that I'm not alone in this. I think lots of times we think we want an explanation from God for our own brokenness. What we really want more than that is we want an encounter with God. We want an experience with God. And that's how we, we, when we become the hands and feet of Jesus, we become a little bit of Jesus to each other when we come alongside each other in mm. brokenness. And that's why all through the book you will read, R-E-dash-member. Yes. We 
Remember. That Lord's <laughs> Supper, he asked us, do this in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. But it, we're supposed to make Christ present over and over again in the world. And how do we do that? We, we come alongside people who feel broken and we make Christ present to remember them. All the broken pieces to be put back together again. We're called to be the remembering people, not only to remember Christ and everything, but to pick up the broken pieces and have them put back together as we act like Christ towards each other. I can still hear Charles Price in a message saying, brokenness precedes wholeness. It's true. That's brokenness, what you're talking about. Brokenness isn't the end. Brokenness is but the beginning. Blessed are the poor in spirit. When we come to a place of realizing I'm broken, that's where Christ can start to resurrect abundance out of that place. And so we're understanding what you say repeatedly mm -hmm. through the book. Mm -hmm. Good brokenness yes. breaks bad, bad brokenness. brokenness. Think about that. That to me was such an epiphany. Every time I, I was walking into places where there was deep brokenness, think, how do I deal with this? Ah, Good brokenness always breaks bad brokenness. Mm -hmm. So the bad brokenness is the places in the world where there's dysfunctionality, where, there, where there's places that are our wholeness, our shalom is being hindered in some way. Mm -hmm. And how is that we meet that? How do we break that bad brokenness? With good brokenness, our own brokenness and givenness. Identifying. Identifying with others, sharing our own broken heart with people, meeting needs. So every time I walk into a bad place, the place that's going to be difficult, I think about how do I break this bad brokenness? With my good brokenness. How do I live broken and given in this situation? Mm -hmm. This is, uh, the, trust these are Ann Voskamp quotes, and they're endless. I mean, that's an exaggeration, <laughs> but they're rich and plentiful. Listen to what life needs versus what you need mm -hmm. from life. Mm -hmm. And allow others to love you. That's a strong emphasis. I think, I think Some people are good at giving, but they're not true. good at receiving. And the whole point of the broken way, it's, it's, it's paralleled at the same time. Yes, I live broken and given out into the world, but at the same time, how well do I allow other people to meet my own brokenness? Mm -hmm. That requires me to be okay to receive, to be vulnerable enough to receive, and, and that takes courage too. And some humility. Deep humility. I'm going to let you do no. for me. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas you think, I, I'm okay, I can keep giving. But no, you have to come to a place of saying, I am broken and I need to receive to let myself be loved. We're going to put a word on the screen because I like to think there are a few people like me who've never seen it before. I thought you might have made it up. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> but it is a theological yeah. term. Yeah. Cruciformity. Cruciformity. I want deep intimacy through in with Christ through cruciformity look, with you're, Christ. You're rubbing your yeah. wrist. I love yeah. this. Yeah. Last I, visit, you talked about what's on your wrist. Yeah. Cruciform means to live your life shaped like a cross. I want the form and shape of my days to be cruciform. Take up your cross, yes. deny yourself. It, all of the mm -hmm. time. I want that visual in front of me that the, yes, the graces and the gifts come down. My gratitude goes up. That's what I talk about 1000 gifts, Eucharisteo. And then those, those horizontal beams broken and given out into the world, which allows me to participate in the sufferings of Christ, to have communion with those who are broken, koinonia. Sometimes we think koinonia is just about having a cup of coffee with someone, but in scripture, it's really so much deeper than that. Christ-centered fellowship. It's Christ, yeah. where you bring your brokenness to the table and I bring my brokenness and minister to, to each other. other. And there's a deep communion in the midst of that. I love, you, you told me last visit that, uh, you'd considered put, having a tattoo. Uh, yeah, but you know what? It's so <laughs> much richer to go ahead and pick up a pen and every day to be intentional. This is what I want my life to be about. This, not only what I want my life to be about, but this is my identity in Christ, that I don't live broken and give out into the world in and out of myself. I live broken and given from all of the grace he's given me and my identity in him. You, there's so much connected to this. And you've been very open about the threat of looming depression. It's yeah. something you yes. have used spiritual gifts and warfare to deal with. Mm -hmm. Fight back the dark with doxology. doxology. <laughs> Fight back the dark with doxology. And it is, we all get to choose darker doxology. So do, how do you go ahead and live out gratitude? How do you go ahead and live a life that's giving grace forward all, ta all the time? Give it forward every day. That fights the dark. And I think we all need to be intentional. The dark is constantly pressing in against us in a thousand different ways. And I think if we can go ahead and preach gospel back to ourselves, and then we can go ahead and share that grace back to him and out into the world, that does fight the dark. So it's praise God from whom all, all blessings, blessings flow. flow. It's and that if, thankful heart. And if we go ahead and we take the, 
all of those blessings, a gift never stops being a gift. It's always meant to be given. Then go ahead and pour that grace back out into the world. It seems your whole family, the farmer included, <laughs> that would be your husband. I just love how you refer to him that way. Have really enjoyed discovering fresh scientific evidence mm. of that, how this works in the brain. Yes. Uh, we, we can distill it to five acts of kindness a week can increase happiness up to three months later. Totally upside down kingdom, totally paradoxical. You can think all the time, how do I de-stress? I bless someone else. To de-stress, I have to bless. So what one thing can I do every day to bless someone else? We know that, we know scientifically that that decreases our own stress, which is totally upside down and backwards. But watching intentionally, loving someone else, blessing someone else, I get the joy 10,000 fold back. And how do you keep <laughs> I've got you putting your head above water here. With all that you are doing, with a, a busy, busy home, your husband's out there working every day on that yes. farm. Yes. And I, I just know right now with your new book, traveling mm -hmm. everywhere, mm -hmm. and, and you've got this threat lurking. Mm -hmm. I just think it must be a real challenge. I think it, both 1,000 gifts and the broken way, the gift is meant in the presence of Christ, how do I stay in his presence all the time? And I think simplicity is not a matter of circumstances, it's a matter of focus. So regardless of what the circumstances look like, how can I focus on Christ every day? This helps me focus in the midst mm -hmm. of the crazy. He sure speaks to you. Deeply. You are listening. And then you're writing it all down, which is absolutely wonderful. So I, my burden today um, has been to try and, and pass on mm. just some of the goodies to entice you because there are so many here. So the cover of the book uh, is the perfect picture for this quote from Anne. Mm. The life that yields the most, mm. yields the most. Yes. That's about surrender, relinquishment. Total, I think the word I keep living is givenness. It's surrender to God and it's given us out into the world. There is deep freedom and liberation in that word. If we can go ahead and live givenness, that, that's a surrender to him, a bending the knee. It's a giving everything that I have back out into the world. That surrender has, has been my uh, the abundant life. And here's the promise from your book. Mm. In Christ, mm. no matter the way, <sighs> the storm, the story, we always know the outcome. Yeah. Our Savior surrounds. Our future, secure. Our, Our joy, joy, certain. certain. Amen. <laughs>